Steve, Byron, Card Sessions here. Uh, today we're talking about, you guessed it, playing cards. Uh, we're going to be looking at the cut, uh, the finish, and the stock on playing cards. There's so many out there, so we're going to jump in, we're going to have a look and see what maybe is going to be your next uh, deck of playing cards. Let's do it, guys. start with stock, like Byron, what is stock? What are the different stock finishes on a playing card? Cool, so the stock is essentially the paper that the card is printed on. Each deck of card from the United States Playing Card Company at least consists of two pieces of paper or stock as we call them. So that stock is made up of an outer sheet on the back, another sheet on the face, and in the center is a really fine black glue that makes it really difficult to see through the cards if you hold a light up to them. Um, that is your stock. The USPCC has used a bunch of different stocks over the years, varying in thickness and thinness. And I've got a couple examples for you here. So this is a aristocrat stock. These are actually the same stock, funnily enough. Uh, this here is a B stock. This is slightly thicker. And most casino style stocks are. Makes them a little bit sturdier for time. So if you hold these side by side, it might be a bit difficult with these two because Aristocrat and they're pretty similar, but the Aristocrats should be a little smidge thinner. And you can see here that indeed they are. They're about two or three cards thinner than the B stock. So the primary difference with traditional USPCC stocks has been thickness and durability with time. Uh, doesn't play a huge part to the way they feel for you, except for the fact that thicker cards traditionally are gonna be a little bit sturdier. It's a little bit hold, like heavier in the hands, a little bit harder to hold, a little bit harder to work with. You may find things like Rapport spreads are a little bit more difficult to do with a thicker deck over a thinner deck, like say a bicycle stock. Nowadays, the USPCC runs things a little bit differently. As far as I'm aware, everything is printed on the same stock. And what they do is they crush that stock down to certain thicknesses. So you'll start with a stock roughly as thick as a B stock, a little bit thinner than it used to be in the past nowadays. And then that stock gets crushed into thicknesses like your aristocrat thickness, and of course the bicycle thickness, which I don't have one with me, but a good example of something that thin would be uh, Dan and Dave's playing cards, which are notoriously very, very thin and very, very good. So this is an old Dan and Dave deck with 52 cards. This is a new Dan and Dave deck with 52 cards. And let's take a look at this difference, which is ridiculous. What is that? One, two, three, four, five cards thickness, just in the stock type. So that's basics of stock. It's all the same paper. Cool. They just crush it down into different thicknesses. Sweet. Um, and yeah, that's the gist of it. Awesome. Cool, all right. So I've heard there's like different uh, cuts you can get with playing cards, traditional and modern. What's Correct. that all about? <laughs> okay, so the gist of it is, uh, about 20 or so years ago, it was fairly common that decks were cut like this one is, where the cards will ferro from the bottom to the top, like so. Or an easy way to look at it is that they will ferro from the face of the deck to the back of the deck. And that's what we call a traditionally cut deck. It means that when the cards are in the print sheet, before they get cut, like so, as a rough example, 
The blades that cut the cards come from the face towards the back. This is referred to as a traditional cut. In more recent years, we found that cards are more often than not cut from the back to the face. And although that doesn't seem like it would make a big difference, it makes a huge difference in the way that they pharaoh. So if you take the card and you try and pharaoh from the face to the back, you'll find that it'll work. They're just gonna be not quite as easy to fit. And so for traditionalists and for people who like to do tabled pharaohs, this makes it a lot more difficult. And so the difference between a modern and a traditional cut deck is which way that sheet of playing card was cut, whether it was from the face to the back design, which would be a traditional cut deck, or from the back design to the face, which would be a modern design deck. As a user of playing cards, it doesn't make a huge difference unless you're into things like tabled pharaohs, but it is something to bear in mind. And most manufacturers will tell you usually whether their decks are traditionally cut or not. Some good examples are a lot of Dan and Dave's full bleed decks, such as the Vintage Blood, traditionally cut. Almost all, all over back design playing cards are traditionally cut, but not always. Keep your eye out for things like bees, uh, aristocrat casino playing cards and B casino playing cards, they're almost always traditionally cut. Most boarded decks of cards for typical day-to-day -day use are not, uh, with the exception of Richard Turner's. And every once in a while, you'll get a brick of uh, bicycles that are just traditionally cut. And it's awesome when you find them. Otherwise, uh, it doesn't make a huge difference to day-to-day -day use. Cool, awesome. So there's different finishes with playing cards. There's like an air cushion finish, there's like a smooth finish. What's the difference between all of these? Yeah, easy peasy. So most playing cards that you'll find nowadays have an air cushion finish. Uh, it's sometimes called a cambric finish. Uh, it's all the same thing for the most part nowadays. If you're buying a deck of cards from the USPCC, they're likely to be an air cushion finish. Uh, basically what it is, is a finish that is laid on top of the card and it has these little tiny divots kind of cut into it. These little air cushions, if you will. And they allow the cards to slide really smoothly over the tops of each other. So this is the most common form of finish on a deck of cards, particularly if you're buying it from the USPCC. By a long shot, the odds are you have an air cushion finish of some kind. It has lots of different names, but it all means the same thing. Uh, linen finish, uh, which is slightly different. I've got an example of an old school linen finish deck here. It was actually made with a linen style sheet. So it's a little bit rougher to the touch, but the concept is the same. It, it allows air to pass between the cards. The other style is smooth finish. Uh, smooth finish literally means <laughs> what it says. The finish is totally smooth. There is a little bit of roughness to it, but for the most part, it is very, very smooth. Uh, and despite what you think, these cards do in, in fact work really, really well. They don't stand the test of time as well as other cards like air cushion finish cards, but they are really, really nice cards. These are the Steamboat reprints by Den and Dave. Really, really nice deck of cards. Uh, and I quite like smooth finish cards. In fact, Steve and I used to use them quite a lot when we started learning Magic because they're typically really sturdy playing cards and they do last a long time if you're not doing things like fanning with them uh, or doing spreads that aren't necessarily table-based. They can look a little bit rough in the hands, but other than that, they're actually really nice cards and really durable, which is a really good thing about them. So the difference primarily is just that these tend to last a little bit longer uh, when you spread them out or you fan them in your hands. Smooth finish doesn't necessarily look as great in the long run, but the cards themselves tend to be a little bit more durable. Cool. Ah, cool. So with all these different playing cards, all these different cuts and finishes, um, what would you recommend? I suppose we'll talk about cardistry. This is a big one. Um, what, what would you recommend for like the people that are like just honing in on cardistry out there, um, type of playing cards to use? Uh, back when I started kind of meddling with cardistry, the key was just anything that I didn't mind getting my hands messy with. I used to draw cards everywhere, I'd tear decks apart, it was just, it was a nightmare. And I'd be dropping cards all over the place. So for me, a big part of it was just using whatever I could get my hands on. The better that you get, the more you're going to find that it's all about individual expression. And so finding awesome decks of cards that just look really cool. These are Smoke and Mirrors. Uh, what else have I got? Dead Blank Gator Back. But I've got heaps of stuff. I've got um, heaps of cool and rare decks now. I've just collected them over the years. And a lot of those I wouldn't really use for magic because they're either 
They're too rare and I don't really want to get people to sign them and I don't want them to just be gone after one session of use. Uh, or I just like them too much to want to use them for that, for magic. So I'd use them for cardistry instead where they're going to last me a little bit longer. So yeah, it all comes down to the individual card tree. There's no right or wrong. I'd start out with cheaper cards because you're probably going to go through quite a lot initially. And then in the long run, expand your collection to carry stuff that you think suits you better and suits your style. Awesome, man. Awesome. So uh, when it comes to magic side of things, uh, like workhorse playing cards, what would you recommend for the guys out there? Uh, bicycles. <laughs> Yeah, for the most part. I'm, I'm a big fan of USPCC. I think they do a great job with their playing cards and at this stage I would consider them unmatched with what they do in this particular category. And as a result, the most affordable deck in that category that is really decent and stands up really well to time are bicycles. Despite what anyone says and despite them being a little bit vintage, I love them and I swear by them and I've got hundreds of them. Um, I'm a big believer that if I'm going to go out and I'm actually going to do magic, I'm going to use bikes without question. I don't mind tearing them up, I don't mind getting signatures on them, I don't mind having to throw a deck of those out a day because they cost a dollar or two. It's not a huge loss. So if I'm a performing magician or I'm a practicing magician, it's bicycles through and through. Cool. I'd agree with that. Yeah. 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 100%. Cool. And something that is kind of magic related, but more like table table work, like gambling routines, that kind of thing. Uh, and I know you're like right into this at the moment as well. What would you recommend for people that are getting more into that kind of gambling table style magic? Uh, casino decks usually. So these here are a good example. These are an aristocrat casino deck. These are uncancelled. So you can buy these super, super cheap from gambling supply houses or even off eBay, uh, if you can, which is often where I find most of mine. They're cheap as chips. You can get bricks of these for like 10, 15 bucks, depending on where you look for them. Um, various different casino brands, but they're all made by the USPCC. They're all really good quality and almost all of them are traditionally cut, which is awesome if you're doing table work. The all over back design, I think, is a necessary thing for table work for the most part, particularly if you're doing things like second deals, bottom deals, uh, center deals, if that's what you're into. All of that kind of stuff really works really well with uh, unboarded decks, all over back design style decks. And so I would recommend picking yourself up either something like these, which are just casino, like actual casino playing cards that were just never used, like game sealed, or you can get things like Let's just pick a random deck. These are plain aristocrat backs. So the only thing that's on this is a logo that says aristocrat. Uh, I've got some here that are bees. So again, borderless bees that just have a bee logo on the back of them. Uh, and literally hundreds of random casino decks. But again, you can just buy online for cheap as chips. Mm. I go through these decks like crazy. One of these will probably only last me a day or two at most. And so I drill these playing cards. And so I stock up on them big time as well. But if you're working table stuff, I'd absolutely recommend casino style borderless playing cards that are traditionally cut. Alright guys, so I hope this uh, quick little video uh, helped heaps when it comes to all the different playing cards that are out there. Uh, like what's good for uh, like magic, table work, cardistry, all the different cuts, finishes. Um, it was just a bit of fun putting this together. Um, let us know in the comments like what you think, uh, what you'd like to see next, and we'll see you guys next time. Card sessions.